custom components in the sense these are nothing but the existing components which are encapsulated according to our requirements. So we will be using our uh, inbuilt components encapsulated into a custom component. So you use these existing components to build your uh, UI page as per the requirement and which can be kept at a common place so that a, a, many uh, modules should be able to use them. Okay. So in the sense, as I said, uh, since we can keep it in a common place, so these can also be invoked multiple times within a project or within a module as well. Mainly, uh, this can be used to improve code readability as well. Okay. Okay, so since now we understood the basics of uh, custom components, so you can uh, see here a very small example just for the basic understanding. Okay, if you look into this uh, base example, you can see there is one custom component called com.hml created, which is being used in some other uh, HTML file. So, and this is the way to invoke any custom component into some other file. So just assume as of now that com.hml is a custom component which is created and which has been called in this particular uh, other uh, HTML file. Mm -hmm. So from this, what we can derive is that we can introduce a custom component to the parent page through, a, through an element tag. So use, uh, make use of element tag and provide the path of your custom component and provide a name after which you can use the name which you have provided in the element tag to invoke your custom component any number of times, okay? So if in case you don't provide name, then the file name itself will be used as a name. So that is what you can use to invoke the custom component. Okay, so here uh, three things which has to be noticed is that usage of element tag, name attribute to provide a uh, name to it. It's an optional attribute, but better to provide. And the source attribute to which we should be able to provide the path of our custom component. Okay, and please also note that this uh, name, uh, custom component name value is case insensitive and generally it should be in lower case by default. Okay. And in the same example, if you notice, there is one uh, even binding also happening. So for even binding between your custom component and your parent component, you, as we discussed in previous sessions, we can either use no, binder with either on or at followed by the name and the function name. Okay, so mainly this event binding is to bind child component event to the custom component. Okay, and uh, in your custom component, you can use a dollar emit function for event triggering and value transferring. You can just remember for now that uh, in the custom component, dollar $emit function will be used to do event triggering and for value transferring. Later in the examples, we can see. Okay. So whenever uh, through dollar $emit, the event is triggered, then this will be called. So basically this event will be triggered. And here we have provided bind parent via method. This is one user defined function. And this function will get a call. The flow is like that. Okay. So this is the very basic structure of a custom component. And uh, when, when we are going through the custom components, we will be coming up across three terms, which are data, props, and computer. Data, I think already we have used multiple times. This is the, which we will define in the JS page wherein we define all the variables, mainly the data model of the page, 
we generally put it in data. Okay, we don't discuss much here. The next uh, specific uh, uh, attributes related to custom component are props and computed. Props is mainly used for communication between the components, mainly between your custom component and your parent component. You will, we can use props to communicate. If we want to pass some values to uh, the custom component from parent component, or you, if we need to pass some parameters from your custom to your parent, this all can be done using props. Okay, uh, as of now, just remember that props is used for communication between the components. We uh, Going forward, we'll understand more by, by looking at the code. And there is one more attribute called computed. Mainly this is used for pre-processing uh, any object or value for uh, setting and getting it. Okay, mainly the pre-processing details we can put under uh, computed attribute. We'll see in the sample. So these are the basic concepts of custom component. Uh, let's uh, uh, move on and uh, check in deep each of these. Okay, first, uh, let's understand about uh, custom events. I will show you the code first. Okay. If you see this uh, JavaScript sample, I have just created one page called Cibo MP, which I will be treating it as a custom component. And there is another page called index, which will be the parent component. Just you can go here, right click. Already, as we know, just new JS page and provide the page name. I have provided as COMP, so that is why this folder is created here. And as I said, generally custom components will be kept at a common place so that other modules or other pages will be able to use them. So if your requirement is specific that it has to be placed at a common place, then you can even place this complete folder within your common directory. Okay. For today's sample, I have placed it in uh, regular pages itself. Okay, so now let's go through this. Okay, so mainly this is my custom component. As I have told initially, we will be using some existing uh, components and derive one page structure, which will be our custom page. The same thing I have done here. I have uh, just for our understanding, I have created some multiple text elements with uh, different attributes. And uh, as of now, this is my custom component. First, let's uh, check these two attributes. Okay, so if you see here, I've created a text component, provided a styling, and uh, have binded an event wherein on click, this function will be called from, which will be defined in JSON child clicked, right? So this one will be called whenever this text component will be clicked. And I have created one more text component, which is conditional. That is, there is a variable called show object. Yeah, which by default, I have uh, defined it in data attribute in my JavaScript file, and its default value is false. Right. So whenever this value becomes true, then this text component will be displayed. And what I'm doing is whenever this particular text component is clicked, as we already saw, child clicked function will be called, wherein I'm toggling this value. I hope till here it is clear. Okay, so if you observe here, I have, uh, as I have mentioned uh, sometime back, we can uh, provide event binding. We have, we can do event triggering during 
in our uh, custom component using dollar emit function. So what I'm doing here is whenever the text component is clicked, and I'm emitting an event with some name. Okay, so the name I have defined in camel case. Camel case in the sense, uh, each word will start with uppercase letter. Such variable names will be, such naming will be called as camel case. So generally, the fun the name which will be defined in dollar emit function should be of camel case. Okay, so that event binding also I'm triggering over here. Please take a note of it. So two things over here. So whenever the text component is clicked, I'm toggling this variable. Means if it is true, it will become false. If it is false, it will become true. So the toggling is happening. Plus I'm emitting an event binder. Okay, so this is my custom component. So let's go to the parent component. So this is the default page, right? What we have defined in our config.js. The first one will be the default page. So whenever this application is launched, this will be the first page which will be displayed. So when you go here, as we have discussed already, I'm using element tag and I'm referring to the custom component which we have just now seen, com.html and I'm providing a name to it, okay? So, and then I'm including the custom component in my main page. Okay, and if you see here, the one thing which we have to note here is already in custom component, we have seen that we are emitting one event with name event type. So from your parent component, you can take that event and handle it. So basically whenever that uh, custom components text is clicked, and whenever this is emitted, the call will come here and this function from your parent component will be called. That is the flow. And if you notice here, the event name. So here, when you are using it in a parent component, you have to use it as a kebab, kebab case, which means you have to, wherever this uh, uppercase is there, there you have to replace with hyphen and the lowercase letter. That will be your kebab case. So in your custom component, you will be defining it using camel case. And in your parent child component, you will be defining it using kebab case. Okay, so from our example, the flow goes like this. Click on this text. This function will be called. Here, toggling happened. and the event binder is event is triggered over here. So this event triggering happens and this function will be called and index.js that function will be defined. Here nothing we are doing. So uh, as per your requirement, whatever needs to be done can be done here. So that is how the events can be passed from your custom component to your parent component. Okay, we can once watch it in previewer. Yeah. Okay, uh, as of now, let's just check this first part, which we have already seen, these first two texts. So whenever I'm, if you notice here, click here to view the hidden text is displayed. And on click of this, since this was by default false, once this is clicked, this toggles and becomes true. So hidden text text should be displayed on the screen. Yeah, so when I'm clicking this, hidden text is displayed. And along with that, the event went here as well. So text click function also will be called along with that. Okay, I hope till here everything is clear. Okay, let's go back to our custom component. Okay, 
uh, during the start of the session, I have already told about three concepts, right? Props, data, and computed. Data, we are, we are already using it, the data model, which we can define per page. So apart from that, let's try to understand more about props. So mainly we can use props to declare attributes of a custom component and to pass these attributes to the child component. Let's see in an example. Okay, if you see here, let's move to the third text now. Okay, so if you see here, this text will just display the value of comprop. The comprop is nothing but the one which is declared in your props. So we can declare some, some uh, variables within your props and use them in your HML of your custom component and the data for this will be passed by your parent component. And if you see here, and the same thing here, here also in the custom component, you have to use, sorry, in the parent component, you have to use the kebab case. And in your custom component, you have to use it, you have to declare it as a, a camel case. See here, it is comp prop p is cats coming to your child component it will uh, we have to use it as a kebab case and the value of this we are passing from our parent component which is prop title prop title we might have defined in our js so this value will be passed here and that value will be printed as a text so clear, right? So mainly this prop is used to declare attributes of a custom component and pass the attributes to the child component. And some more details about the props. Let's go back to that. Okay. So the supported types for these props will be you can declare them as string, number, boolean, object, array, function. So all of these data types will be supported for props. And uh, I hope camel case and kebab case part is clear. I will repeat again. In your custom component, it will be through camel case. And in your parent component, you have to use it as kebab case. Okay. And one more concept over here is, if we need to provide a default value. Okay, so in case the parent component is not passing any value, and if custom component defines some default value, then that will be used. Otherwise, if parent component has passed the value, the passed value will be having the high priority. So if in case you have you want to provide default value to any prop, then we have to we have to set it using the default keyboard. Sorry, do the default a keyword. In this case, in such cases where we have to provide the default value, we must define the props attribute in object format. So suppose uh, uh, take the example of comp prop. If I don't want to give any default value, then we can just define it as an array format like this. And if we want to provide some default value, then just declare it as an object. JavaScript object and use the default keyword and provide your default value. So in that case, if your parent component doesn't provide this, then here instead the default value will be used. Here since our default value is nothing, so nothing will be, it will be printed as empty. Okay, so if you see in this example, the third text box, this one, the prop type prop title is displayed over here. That's because it is passed from our parent component. This part will be passing it as an attribute from our parent component. Okay. So hope default value is clear. Okay, one more important concept is there. Okay, so just now what we have seen, 
that inside a prop we can we can declare a variable in custom component and the value will be coming from your parent component right so which means that data can be transferred only from the parent component to our custom component right and uh, once this data is passed we are not allowed to change the value passed to this child component so this data cannot be changed for example i want to change the comp prop value from my custom component that is not possible but if in case your requirement insists to do that then there is a way what we can do is we can go to for example let's take an example of default count here okay so this default count has a default value and this data actual data will be coming from our parent component right so if in case i want to change this default count value within my custom component i cannot do it directly instead what we can do we can define one different variable in our data attribute and assign this property value to this new variable and then anyway the value from our data can be changed anytime so this value can be changed and used accordingly as per your requirement so what we can derive from this is we can receive the value passed by props as a default value in data and then change the data value hope i am clear i'll repeat so we can receive the value passed by props as a default value in data see i am assigning default value to this variable from the value of prop and then this data data value can be changed anytime okay so this is one way to do it so that's why this we can uh, uh, call it as a unidirectional value transfer okay let's move on to the next topic okay say suppose in my custom component i want to watch any data changes mainly to listen for attribute changes in a component we can use dollar watch method dollar watch function mainly to add a callback so just use dollar watch and the variable name here i am putting watch on title variable and define a callback define a function which will be called whenever this value is changed so whenever title value changes on property change value will be called and if you can see here already in build there will be two parameters which is new value and old value which you can use according to your requirement okay and uh, there is one more concept called computed which we have already seen in our slide so mainly this is used to improve the development efficiency as in you can uh, pre process if you see here in this example there is one mess a uh, function called message created which will return some data like the value of time and value of object title as a string so mainly this will be pre processed and kept so whenever this is called directly that value will be returned by the framework so in such cases where you have to pre process and keep the value already ready made then those can be placed in computed attributes okay so even you can add getters and setters over here so whenever this value is set or uh, whenever this value is uh, read by uh, some other component so then these functions will be called internally so if you see in this example so whenever this our uh, text view is clicked i am assigning this dot notice equals to some other value so whenever i assign like this automatically the setter will be called with the value which are, which is passed 
and here in our implementation we are just assigning this value to one of our variable so since the time is changed this also will be kept ready this value also will change so mainly just remember that for pre process if anything needs to be pre processed and kept those can be maintained in our computer uh, attribute Okay. okay, let's now understand about event parameters. If you see here, this already we learned, right? So if we want to trigger any event from custom component to parent component, we can do that using dollar init. Not only that, if we want to pass any parameter, some data to be passed, during this event triggering that also we can do wherein as a second parameter we can pass all the parameters which needs to be passed to the parent component so from this what we can say is a, a custom component can pass parameters to its upper layer component through this inbuilt bounded event okay so let's check this code once so what, what is happening here? On click of our first text box, we are calling the child clicked, wherein apart from all of this, I'm emitting an event with name event type two and with two parameters, text and count. Let's see on how these can be received by our parent component, wherein we are using this particular custom component. Okay, since that is emitted, so this will be triggered, right? So here, as we already discussed, we will uh, add that attribute as a kebab case. And uh, since the event is triggered here, this method is called index.js. What is it? Text click two. Yeah. So in the text click two, if you see, there is a default parameter and from that parameter dot detail we can get all the parameters which we have passed from the custom component to this main page okay so this is clear right so just use e dot detail dot the parameter name so two parameters uh, exist here text and count so I'm taking it using e.detail.text, e.detail.count, and I am putting in local variable. Okay, so we can try it out once. Okay, so I'm when I click here, all this will be triggered. So since we are printing in console log, we can check here. Yeah. So these are the two logs. This is the value which is passed from my custom component. If you see here, the value of count is one. That's because whenever my text view is clicked, the count variable is also incremented by one. And that is what is passed to the parent component, which is getting printed in our, in our console log. You can again try with multiple clicks. So per click, this value will be incremented and sent to our parent component. Okay, we have to see the previewer of our main page. Okay, so I'm clicking here. The count value is one. Again, I'm clicking. Now the count value became two. And one more thing we are doing. So this value we are assigning to our text text variable, which we are printing in the body. So that's why this is getting replaced. If you see here in our uh, custom component, the text value is this parameter from the child component. So the text value in our parent is getting replaced with this and that is what is getting printed here. This is the text received from the 
child component in the sense from the custom component. Okay. So hope uh, the parameter passing part is clear from custom component to parent component. Okay. Please do remember that we can obtain the parameter details using the variable name dot detail uh, from the, this uh, detail object. Okay. Next, uh, let's move on to the next uh, concept, which is slot. Let's move back to our custom component. And if you see here, I have defined a uh, slot tag over here. So the main purpose of this slot tag is to create a slot inside a custom component into which the content defined in the parent component can be filled. So if we want to fill some content which is given by the parent component, then we can do it using slot. Say suppose this is my uh, default data which I need to display to the page which is calling this particular custom component and along with that after this data some more data has to be filled which will be provided by the parent component in such cases we can use slot so whenever uh, an empty slot like this is created then whatever content is defined in the parent component under this element that will be used and replaced in your custom component so this gets replaced with this content okay so mainly if you see in this particular sample so this is nothing but this just focus on this particular content. This is nothing but this content which is getting displayed here. Already we have seen since we are calling from element over here. So these five text attributes are printed here, including the hidden text followed by slot. In the sense, this will be replaced by this. So the text value is getting printed, which is this one and text clip this is one more value which is getting printed okay so these two are getting printed and there is one more concept here so whatever we have seen here is just a default slot if we want to create some named slots then you we can do it using the name attribute so mainly when multiple slots are needed inside a custom component, in such scenarios, we can name them so that we can specify the slot into which our content has to be replaced from the parent component. So in such cases, we can define named slots. Here I have defined two named slots with name first and second. And in my parent component, I want this particular component to be replaced only for my second slot. So in that case, this will be replaced here. And then the other one will be replaced here. So the first fill in the first slot is printed here and then fill in the second slot. So basically, if you see this example, these five text elements are printed followed by the slot details, which are these two parameter from child component text body and first and second slot uh, components are displayed. So that's why this, this, this is the whole custom component display in our parent page. Okay, hope the slot part is clear over here. Okay, so mainly these are the important concept in the custom component. Before moving to the next topic, let's just understand the life cycle also. Generally, our framework supports a few life cycle callbacks for the custom components. Okay, so most of these we have already used, like on init, on attached, on detached, on destroy under. Let's move back here. Okay, 
Okay, so these are the life cycle callbacks provided by the framework for a custom component. Let's in brief understand about these functions. On init, this will be triggered once whenever a custom component is created, right? So next will be on attached, which will be triggered when a custom component is added to any particular page, which we have already uh, defined in our config. So mainly whenever this is added to our component uh, three, that time on attached will be triggered. So this is where actually some uh, UI scenarios like image loading, some animations, initial initiations and all, we can perform during on attached because this is where our component is getting attached to the main page component tree. Okay, there are uh, uh, on, on attached already we saw, right? So coming to on detached, so this will be called whenever the custom component is removed from our main layout page. And then if you see, there's one more uh, callback called on layout ready. This will be triggered when uh, layout uh, calculations like, uh, so in your layout, there will be multiple components, right? So based on the parameters given, all these uh, components will be placed across the page in the respective positions. So whenever the layout calculation is completed, that time on layout ready is called. Okay, so next one is on page show. This will be triggered whenever our component is displayed, getting displayed on the page. So vice versa, whenever the our component is getting hidden, that time on page hide callback will be called. And the final one is on destroy. This will be triggered whenever this complete the component is getting destroyed. Generally in on destroy callback, uh, resource clearing and some variable clearing and all will happen mainly to avoid memory leaks. Okay, so these are the inbuilt uh, callback functions which are provided by the framework which can be used according to our requirement. Okay, so now let's go back to our sample. Hope our sample code is clear. Let's in brief just see once what is happening all together okay so as i already uh, told before i have created one no, uh, custom component called comp wherein i have provided some text definitions and slots right so on click of this i am updating some values plus i am emitting some events so there are two events emitted. One is without parameters and one is with parameters. So this, whenever this is emitted, our parent component can fetch these parameters using the variable name passed dot detail object, right? And we also studied about props. Props can be defined in two ways. One is using array format and using object format. If we don't need to pass any default value, then directly we can use as in array format. Just define an array and provide your property names. And this will be defined in kebab case. And if you want to provide default value, do it using object format and default value can be provided using default keyword. Okay, and if any pre-processing needs to happen, then provide it under computed property. Okay, so coming back to our, uh, this one, our parent component, I, I used element tag and got a reference for, uh, to our parent, sorry, to our custom component. And using that tag, I have provided the property values and uh, the, I have also declared the events, events when these are triggered, what needs to happen, those attributes I have provided here, along with some content, which will be replaced to the custom components slot tag. Okay, so this is a brief recap of whatever we have learned. Okay, and I have already told you before, if this needs to be common, commonly used across modules, then 
or across pages, you can place it in common case, right? So coming back, hope custom component part is clear, right? If any queries, please uh, speak out or you can put in chat window so that we can see them in the end. Okay, so now coming back to the library development. Okay, so I have created multiple libraries here for our understanding. First, let's go to our lib sample. Okay, okay, or else first let's check the UI part since we have read about custom components. So let's go to lib UI sample. Generally, any library will have two things mainly. One is package.json and, uh, and other will be your code, which will be placed within your library. So what you have to do is create a folder wherein your library code has to be uh, placed and create one package.json and provide a name to your library. So this name is what will be used while you reference it from your modules. Okay, so provide a version, description, and the main page of your library. Here, I have placed all my code over here within a source folder. So the main page of uh, it I have provided here. This is wrong. It should be lipconf.json. Okay. And these are all default. Any scripts has to be executed. Those you have to place here. As of now, it's irrelevant and other details. Okay, so when you are creating your uh, package.json, either you can copy, take this structure from somewhere and copy, or what you can do is, actually, okay, lib demo. So I've created a library. Go to your terminal. So go to your, uh, folder which you have created and you can do npm in it. So this will ask you for all these details and once you provide them, it will by default add uh, the package.json within your uh, directory which you have just created. Okay, so it is asking for name, this first one. So I have provided us the same name with demo. Okay. Okay, version, some description, entry point. If you just enter, it will take it as index.js. Otherwise, you can provide your name. Let me keep it as index. Okay, this all default values itself. So I am asking, uh, I am allowing it to take. Yes. Okay. See, now if you see here, package.json is created with the details which we have provided. Now place your code here, that's all. Okay, so coming back to our UI sample, what I have done is I have created a custom component, the same thing, whatever I have created here, the comp. this particular page, same thing I have copied here with a different names, that's all. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. The same code I have placed here. So now, once this library is created, you can add this as dependency in your main application. Go to the package.json of your main application and Refer to your library since this is ex this library exists within your project. Use file colon and the relative path dot dot slash lib ui underscore sample. Just give the relative path and provide it a name over here. Okay, that's all. Once you create it, so suppose I add something over here. Okay, the IDE will ask you to sync. Right now I'm not doing. 
so once your id asks such thing just do sync now so whenever you do sync now what will happen is there will be a node modules directly which directly which will be created within your application and whatever dependencies you have added all those will be downloaded over here okay so all of these are downloaded over here so mainly your lib ui sample dependency is downloaded here into your node modules then from your main page you can call your custom component using the same element tag just give the relative path to your sample and provide it a name that's all and then you can use that name to reference to your custom component which is defined in your library this part is clear right it's just same only difference is that we have just moved it as a separate library library and added a package.json to it to provide it a proper module name okay so this source code i will share to all of you please try out offline okay this is very important because all of us are doing library development okay so what i suggest is whenever you start with any uh, requirement no need to directly go and create a library you can first keep it in some common place all the files and uh, try out and once it works we can move to library in this fashion or other files from starting itself you can just follow this approach and do it as a library yeah right so just now we have seen on how to uh, use a custom component which is created in a library so there will be many cases wherein you have to reference some js functions or js stuff from your library how to do that also we, let's go through it once so i have created one more sample called lib sample and the same thing package.json i have created and i've provided a link to the main page so this is the main page okay here i don't have much ui it's all javascript functionality which is present here let's in brief understand what is added here so if you see in this library i have uh, created two uh, javascript files one is request and one is request body okay so in request it's just a class wherein there is one getter and setter added to one variable that's a very simple class and that can be exported like this export default request that's all and let's go through the request body this is also similar just a class with getter and setter added to two variables underscore content and underscore nights and i have created one static function which can be called directly without object creation and i am doing some stuff here and i am returning something finally i am exporting this request body hope all of you guys have gone through the javascript training materials so whenever uh, any class or anything has to be exposed to outside world we need to export it so here i am exporting it exporting this particular class and in my main javascript page i am just creating one variable which is holding these two objects and i am exporting this variable okay so it's a very simple library javascript library and my requirement is that i want to use this library and create a request body let's see how to do it since i have created a static function here which is exported i can directly should be able to use it okay so same thing so from our main application i have added a dependency of lib sample because of which my node modules have this sample downloaded so now our application knows about this library 
Now, let me go to my main page. Okay, if you see here, I have provided a name to it, right? Lip underscore sample in my entry. So I can refer, refer to this library using the same name. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm just importing the request details. Let me close. Yeah, let's focus on these two files. So whatever I've exported here, I'm able to import it here. And I am able to, since I am able to call the static function which I have defined in request body. So what this will do? This will just create one new object of this particular class and return that object. Since the object is returned here, sorry here, since the object is uh, that uh, whatever object is created, I am holding it to a variable and. If you see here, as we already discussed, this has two variables and there are getter methods added to both of them. So I can use this getter methods to get its value. So object dot content will provide me the value of this particular variable in this particular class. So I am able to use the uh, functions which are exposed in my library in my javascript files in my library so in this way you can try out uh, for exposing and using uh, javascript uh, functions from library into your application clear right same thing i think here we are exposing one more dot mimes also if you want to use just take it, take it to a variable and use it. Okay, so JavaScript part is pretty simple. Uh, it's uh, like uh, the regular JavaScript only, just export the things, classes, objects, anything, function, and get a reference of the library to your application and directly import them and call them. That's all. Okay, hope this, both the things are clear. First one is about uh, using the custom components defined in the library, how to use them in our application and the logical functions which are defined in the library, how to use them in the application. Clear? Okay. Say suppose this libraries, whatever you have created, you, you want to upload a separate modules in our repository. Then what we have to do is we have to create a create the library in the same structure and upload them into NPM. So have to upload uh, what, are, what are the procedures, details needs to be provided. Everything we'll discuss in a separate session. But as of now, you can remember that this can be uploaded to the NPM with after which any application should be able to download your NPM package and use them, okay? Like that, uh, there is one library called uh, HMOS Neomorphism, which is already uploaded to the NPM. So I just, uh, I'm adding it as a dependency over here so that we can just see what is happening, okay? So this version is uploaded to NPM. So once I add it to the dependencies of my main application, as we already discussed, the dependency will be downloaded to node modules. See here, all of it will be downloaded. This is These are all nothing but my uh, custom classes only, custom components. <coughs> Sorry. So once this is downloaded, anyway, uh, using them is pretty simple as we already discussed. Okay, I think I haven't added it, just the same thing. Just use the element tag and provide the path of the component which you want to use. Say, suppose I want to use the team component. It's just a custom component, which just uses slot C. So just add that uh, HML file path over here, provide it a name, then you can just add it over here so that that component will be rendered in this particular page, that's all. 
so clear right so these three are the main concepts for the basic library development have to create a library locally and refer it from your main application and use it for both custom components and your uh, uh, javascript uh, apis okay so i think uh, most of our libraries uh, have to develop ui part right for few people few libraries are allocated to uh, do some uh, changes in your ui <clears throat> And uh, in some cases, we need to even draw directly on the canvas. So in such cases, create a, use that uh, canvas inbuilt component over here. And then if in a, you just update your code to update and draw using that canvas and use that in your main page, that's all. Maybe canvas uh, uh, component in detail, we can have in a separate session, but for now, uh, Canvas also can be treated as your other inbuilt components. Okay. Clear, right? Yeah. So I think that's all from my side. Hope all of you have understood on how to create custom components and use them either within your application or you can put them in as a separate library and reference in refer them from your application and use them and also we have learned about how to expose js functions in the libraries and use them okay so guys if you have any queries uh, we can discuss now Okay, and as I said, this whole sample I'll be sharing. So offline, please go through um, the, all the concepts within the sample because uh, whatever concepts we have discussed here, all of this, the uh, properties, computed data, and how to change the value of the variables defined <laughs> within the uh, data function. So all of this, please go through and understand in detail. These are very important uh, for uh, creating custom components and have to pass the data from your custom to your parent. Mainly all this communication should happen properly between your parent and child components. So all these concepts are very important for our day-to-day -day work. Okay, so all of you also can try to create one new page in your common folder and try to call them from your main page. In that way, you will understand it more clearly. <clears throat>